Hi, my name is Jack Webb and I'm a real estate broker with Crylike Realtors and today I'm going to discuss a few tips for buyers when they're buying a home. So if you're getting ready to make what will be probably one of the largest investments of your lifetime and that is buying a home, it stands to reason that one of the first things you want to do is to hire a first-class professional licensed realtor. In addition to hiring a top-notch licensed realtor, it's obviously uh, also very important to hire a top real estate company. So when you're looking for a realtor that you want to represent your best interests, I highly recommend that you also look for a realtor that works for an excellent real estate company. Um, obviously one of the best places in my opinion to go would be Crylike Realtors. Crylike is the number one real estate company in the Mid-South. We offer a lot of the tools and services that other companies just don't offer. Uh, for example, we offer excellent moving services. Uh, we offer moving services for any place in the continental United States. And we're also a member of the largest relocation network in the world, which is leading real estate companies of the world. Once you hire a realtor, one of the first things I'd recommend you do is to sit down with that realtor and ask him or her several questions. Uh, one of the first questions would be to be sure that they know how to do a professional CMA, which is a competitive market analysis. When they do that, it will compare the subject property that you're getting ready to make an offer on to other properties in the, the community or the neighborhood to be sure that you understand a good estimate of current market value for this home that you're interested in. In addition to that, I would also ask that realtor to discuss the amenities of the neighborhood or the community that this home is located in. Um, things such as uh, commute time, um, certain restaurants that may be in the neighborhood, uh, churches, clubs, uh, schools, very important is, is what the school ranking is, which a realtor should be able to find that out for you as well. Uh, another thing would be is this home in a planned unit development or is it in a community that requires homeowners association dues and fees? So that, those are several things I would highly recommend that you go over with a realtor on the front end. When you get ready to make your initial offer on the property, you want to sit down with your real estate agent, your licensed realtor, and you want to talk about what that offer may look like. Really, you want to think about beginning with the end in mind. And the end in mind is where we, you would end up on the eventual sales contract number. And so what you want to do is you don't want to start too low, which means you may offend the seller and the seller may be upset with you and you may not even get a counter off if you start too low. On the other hand, if you start too high, then you may leave some money on the table and the seller may take your initial offer and then you'll kind of kick yourself because you didn't really think the offer through. So be sure you discuss this with your agent, get them to do a CMA, and you want to start maybe a little bit lower than where you think you'll end up, and then maybe negotiate once or twice on counter offers and then hopefully arrive at the final figure. Another question you could ask your agent is to find out whatever they can about the property and how long it's been on the market. It's very easy for an agent to check in the MLS, the multiple listing system, to find out exactly how many days a property's been on the market. And in addition to that, your buyer's agent, that is your personal advocate, they can also check with the listing agent to find out if there's certain motivation that the seller has to sell. You know, what is the reason for selling? Sometimes they'll disclose that or sometimes they may not. But it's fair game to you be able to ask your buyer's agent to check and find out what the motivation is because sometimes there's some unusual situation or circumstances that may have to do with job changes or something like that that may make the seller more motivated than normal. And certainly if the market's, if the house has been on the market for a good while, um, if it's been on the market for say over four or five or six months, the seller should be more motivated to negotiate on the price than if it's just been on the market for a couple of weeks. Another item that's very important is to try to get a good understanding of the overall condition of the home that you're thinking about making an offer on as it compares to other homes in the neighborhood of the community. Um, obviously, I would think that you would have already spent 
a time looking at several other homes in the community so that you could compare the, the average condition of this subject property to other homes in the neighborhood. Um, another thing to do is to be sure that you do a thorough walkthrough of this home that you're going to make an offer on, to be sure that you closely look at um, things like heat and air systems, um, the plumbing, be sure that you um, check the plumbing in several different bathrooms in the kitchen. Um, another thing to do is be sure there's not too much deferred maintenance. If you're looking at uh, certain flooring issues or the roof, or be sure you go down in the basement and look at that to be sure that there no, there's no water intrusion or mold or anything like that. Uh, another thing to be sure you do is to look at the seller's property condition disclosure. Uh, that should be a four or five page typewritten document in which they've, they've filled in a lot of um, answers and feedback on what the seller knows about their subject property. It would be very important for you to read that over before you make an offer. Another important item when it comes to drawing up your offer and trying to make your offer as competitive as you can is to go ahead and get pre-qualified for a mortgage or for a loan before you make the offer. Uh, the purpose of that is twofold. Number one, you want to know what you can qualify for. You want to go meet with a lender or a mortgage company or at least do something online to figure out the approximate loan amount that you can qualify for. If you don't do that, you're just wasting your time and you're wasting the time of the seller. Secondly, when you make that offer, if you have been pre-qualified for a mortgage and you have a letter that can accompany the offer, that makes that offer a lot stronger than another offer that you may be competing with where someone else has not been pre-qualified. When your agent starts to draft the offer to purchase this home, uh, one of the first things you want to think about is not having too many contingencies in the offer. If you have an offer that has four, five, six different contingencies in it, it's really going to intimidate the seller. And if they have another offer that's a much cleaner offer, it's going to hurt your bargaining position. So I would highly recommend the less contingencies, the better. Uh, two contingencies I would almost always have in an offer would be, one is the financing contingency, unless you're fortunate enough to be a cash offer. If you are, great for you, but otherwise 95% of the time it would be contingent upon financing, so be sure you include that contingency in there. The other contingency would be a contingency upon a home inspection being done on the property. Uh, one other comment on that would be, one way that you can make your offer a little bit cleaner is instead of asking for 15 or 20 days of due diligence period as far as the inspection period to do all, all inspections of the property, maybe you could narrow that down to 8 or 10 days instead of 15 or 20 and that may make your offer a little bit stronger than the one you're competing with. One other thing to keep in mind is when you're negotiating on the purchase of a home is to try to keep your emotions in check. I know that sounds a little challenging, uh, because buying or selling a home can be a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. But what I always encourage buyers and sellers to do is to not only look at their side of the transaction, but also to look at the other side. The goal when you're negotiating is to have a win-win proposition where both the buyer and the seller are both happy in the end and you go through to a successful closing. So when negotiating, try not to get too emotional about it and remember that this is a business transaction and anything that you do could hurt your negotiating position. It could also show what you're doing to the seller. So you just want to be careful in how you conduct yourself during the negotiations.